uh, we were saying we check ID and SAP. That's the big thing that I want you to remember. And what that means is we check ID 100%. But what is it for? Well, as per my story earlier, uh, we started with the logon simply because a customer challenged us to do that and we worked on this solution and did a complete two-factor authentication to log on to SAP. But then we quickly evolved what uh, Consul uh, Johan, that was actually excellent presentation, really good. I didn't know really everything you were doing, but uh, it was good, um, enjoyed it. Um, it's about protecting the function. That's why there's a big right circle around this, the fraud prevention in the system. But then the technology can be used for so much more. It can be used for accountability. Uh, employee verification, employees that don't even know that SAP exists because they use it like we have uh, old Harvard List in Namibia. Uh, they use it for employee self-service. They go to a kiosk, they put their finger on the sensor, and they take vacation. It is that simple. No more filling out paperwork. We can use it for time and attendance. We can use it for medical checkups. We can use it for equipment checkout. Or one cool thing that we just did in Brazil is the company, very simple manufacturing. They hand out a hard hat and... Uh, the guy doesn't put it on and it gets hurt. And then he sues the company. He says, I never got my hat. Well, he checked it out of SAP. Well, prove me that you gave it to me. Well, now they prove it to them. Hold your hand over the scanner and we know we have to prove. So a lot of cool parts or what we talked about NSSA. Now we can further use the biolog to identify the customers inside the system. And it's about the it could be anything from social security beneficiaries to bank customers to university students. All these students take tests and what do they do? I'm not good at math, so I send in my roommate. My roommate's much better, takes my ID, takes the test for me, I get an A. Wonderful. Uh, a lot of universities lose the accreditation in the United States right now, so they're all going to biometrics to prevent that. So. We were talking uh, earlier about the logon. We all saw the password, the shoulder serving. It's on the sticky note. Here's actually the screenshot, what I was talking about earlier, the backspace window. It shows the three people that logged in on that computer, and it shows the one guy that didn't have his coffee, and he typed in password. Now I match the password to one of the logon IDs, and I'm in. It's wonderful. It's that simple. Uh, key areas. Obviously, it works for everything in SAP, but the key areas, like uh, Johan was talking about, finance, that's the big deal. HR, we see a lot of interest because there are a lot of lawsuits, a lot of violations, a lot of compliance regulations. We see a lot of interest in sales and distribution. That's where things disappear and where money is being lost. And then, of course, materials management, but not to underestimate, and that was great that that uh, they actually know about this, the actual administrators, the consultants, that's actually one of the biggest parts, is that the consultants can cause a lot of damages because they get all the access they want, because they need to maintain the system. So what does it look like actually in Biolog itself when we protect something? Well, you can protect any function you want. And you can do it as simple uh, the, you don't even need to know ABAP. You go in the biolog configuration, you type ESE16 SE or SE38 or PA20, and you hit safe and it's protected. It's that simple. Uh, it's kind of like flying a jumbo jet. You have all these buttons when you walk in the cockpit. They only need a few of them to fly the thing. The, uh, the rest is just for additional stuff, but you have the options. Like, for example, protecting infotypes or protecting individual tables in SAP or all the way down to the value level. Uh, the, the, one of the oldest central banks in the world has been using this for 10 years and they had a very simple requirement. If it's less than 10,000 euros, everybody with SAP authorization whoop, goes straight out. If it's over 10,000 euros, narrow it down to a selected group of people and they need to provide the biometric credentials. Well, if it's over 100,000 euros, one of the 10 people can request it, but it takes two supervisors, like Johan explained, to reconfirm. So you have two signatures on a check inside SAP. 
and then the money goes out. And then it goes all the way down to the little green check mark, which is basically the enter button. Somebody filled out some data in the screen, created a purchase order, and now they save it. And at this point, we want to check ID and want to say, who's the guy on the keyboard doing this right now? This is a boring workflow for the technical people here. They love to see this stuff. The, the guy enters on the keyboard. The data goes inside SAP. And that was important to point out earlier. It's actually we have our own namespace, which is real time. And everything that we create is in that namespace. Why is that cool? Well, if you do any upgrades, it doesn't affect it. The, it's, it's outside the system. It's in our own namespace. But it's inside SAP, which is important too. So then it goes to the template, comes back, and it says, yep, it's allowed or it's not allowed. And then it triggers the email alert, which console is using, saying Bongani just tried to log into Biolog and change the template, was rejected. Then the log file, Johan, you need to update your log file. That thing was from 2011. It is so much cooler now, <laughs> color-coded, you name it. Uh, it was a thing, It was good. So here's just an example. We want to protect the F1110 and outgoing payment. What do we do? Well, we do step one. We go on a table. We define a random function number. Could be anything, letter numbers, 470. Description, we want to protect the outgoing payment. Then we select our inspection feature. In this case, Palm Secure, the Palm Main. Why? Because we love it. We could use fingerprint. We could use a, a password. We could use smart card. We use your know, combination. And in the future, if any of you came and said, we really want this, but I'd really prefer to have the laser going in my eye to scan my, uh, my retina, okay, well, then we'll talk about the integration. It's not a big deal. Then we specifically invite people or whitelist people. Well, why is that important? Well, think about it this way. Your administrator has access to an outgoing wire transfer because he had access to everything. He might also have a biometric template because he does a lot of testing. Do we want him to do an automated wire, uh, our wire transfer? No. So we specifically invite people. Then we go on the next uh, table there the, in the center, and we just type in the F1110 is now assigned to the function 470. And we save it, and we're done. And then we take the last step because we don't want administrators or consultants or somebody else in. I want to know exactly what's going on. So now I say that function 470 can only be executed by Mr. Smith and by Werner. And now for the first time, I can guarantee the CEO that Smith and Werner are the only two people in the world that will ever execute the F1110. And that's a very powerful message, and we get to that here in a second if Werner gives us the time. Uh, so now we can easily define, if we go deeper than this, we can't, the transactions, the info types, we can do it via configuration. It takes minutes to protect a couple of transactions. But now we go a little deeper. They want the, a little check mark protected. Now we need to pl place a biometric checkpoint in the ABAP code. Any normal ABAP programmer can do it. If not, Bongani can do it, probably with his eyes closed. Put the code in, define another function number, 471, define the protection, and then it's done. Uh, that easy. So more important, how does it look for the user? No different than before. They still type in their F1110. The only thing that happens is the little thing pops up, and they hold their hand over it or put the finger on the sensor. And then it continues the way it did before, or it will kick them out and say, ah, you're not allowed. So really, no big change. You don't need to train your users to hold their hand over the scanner. It's pretty obvious. This slide is fairly important. Um, right now, who has access to the F1110? And this is just an example it's for any transaction, right? It could be the intern, because she gets rules assigned all day long and never taken away. She actually has SAP all by the time her internships is done. We have seen it many times. Uh, then the secretaries, they have, act, they have passwords to all the executives, and they have all the rules. Even they don't need them, but they are executives, so they have to have all of it, right? Uh, and then we have the colleagues that share password. I'm going on vacation, Bongani. It's password one. Just log in, do my stuff, so I don't, I'm 
don't have to work too much, right? Come back. But more important, it really is the SAP consultants. It's the Lynx AS, it's the Accentures, the IBMs, the Price Waterhouse, the guys that come in and do the work that gets all the access. They have no loyalty. They're gone in a month anyway, and they have access to everything. Of course, you remember Snowden, and then we have the hackers that we talked about. So long story short, after we put the BioLog ID check in place, and we invite Thomas Smith and Werner to be the only two people in the world to access that function. For the first time, we can guarantee the CEO that all the other guys are out, which gives us a massive amount of control that we don't have right now. But it also gives us something else, which makes it actually really, really cool. We don't have to worry about rolling all this out to all our thousands and thousands of users. So as per example, if you have a thousand named SAP users in your company and we sit together and we say, what are your pain points? You want to work with finance, HR? We start out and we say, there is the top 20 functions that we want to protect. So, okay, then let's sit back and, and find out how many people need to have access to those protected functions. Is it 150? Is it 300? Is it 200? For sure, it's not 1,000. It's a subset of the people. And this is actually very important. We're talking about enforcing the least privileged access is a, a big thing right now. Enforcing the least privileged access can easily be done with the biolog technology. And what that means is you don't need a thousand devices. You might need 200, maybe 300 until you roll out further. But to get started, you just have to have a few devices deployed. And the important part is you have an active protection for those 200 users, but you have a passive protection for the 800 users as well, because none of them will ever get in, including the hackers and all the bad guys and everybody else. And here is the beautiful log file that we need to make sure that the console has access to. It's beautiful, color coded. What you showed was the SAP log file, but that's actually really important. All the data that we write go into the SAP log file. So if you have a third party auditing tool, you can pull it all out. But that log file is actually much cooler because you can search and say, show me everything that Bongani did the last month. Ooh, interesting, got rejected many times. Or, um, and that's where you can also set the, the, the things, but it's where you can say, if somebody gets rejected, this guy gets an email, but if a purchase order gets approved, we could send an email directly to the vendor to make sure that they know it got approved. So it could actually become part of the process. But here it's very important to see that, uh, just to give you the example at the, the second one, uh, or the forced one down, Matthias, uh, a hacker actually tried to access the director of finance and create that automated payment. And you see that the lines behind it are empty. Why is that? Well, obviously we don't have a biometric reference template for this hacker who comes in from somewhere in Eastern Europe, but it doesn't matter, we rejected it anyway. So the mission was accomplished. Just to reiterate, we have talked about it, say we can cover everything in SAP, and we know SAP is big. We have 25 different vertical markets. Uh, you can run an airline. You can do anything in SAP. And it doesn't matter if it's HANA or whatever it is. The core or if it goes in the cloud, it's on premise. As long as it is an ABAP-based SAP system, we are right at home because we will be installed wherever your SAP is installed, right inside the SAP. And with that, uh, real quick, I want to jump. We can talk about this uh, offline here. These are the beautiful kiosks that you see outside. Here's actually, I think that is Bongani standing in Transnet in front of a kiosk. Uh, Transnet has rolled it out across Africa to build uh, over a thousand locomotives. And then here is the NSSA case study. But we can talk about this. I want to take uh, time to give you a really brief demo here.